You're listening to Link FM 97.1 and talking about uh, sending far. A lot of people are launching music careers at the moment. And a big talk in South Africa, of course, is SA Idols. On the line from Johannesburg, I have Unati. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Unati. Welcome to East London. You're no stranger to the Eastern Cape, I believe. I'm no stranger. I was born in the Eastern Cape. I'm a proud Eastern Cape girl. Oh, wonderful, man. Where were you born? I was born in Grantstown. Yeah. Um, and we subsequently have a house in Port Elizabeth and Grandstown, and I guess now we just need to get a house in East London and to finish up the trio. <laughs> Wonderful, man. So you, you're quite an inspiration to a lot of young people in this area. I know that because Thank of you. because of the fact that you're rootsy, and we'll talk about that in a short while. In in the meantime, though, idols, SA idols. Yeah. For the listeners who don't know, and everybody should know by now, you are the rose that sits in between those two thorns. <laughs> You're so sweet, but yes, I am. I well, am. I kind of have to keep Gareth and Randall in check. Exactly. You can't call them roses. No, no way. Yeah. What's, yeah. It, what's it like? What's it like being in the middle of the two of them? It's a huge honor for me um, <laughs> because they've, they've, they've been on Idols for so long, but also they've achieved so much in radio and broadcasting and, mm. and love music as much as I love music. Um, it's been a fun ride. The, the regional audition phase was absolutely hilarious going around the country with the two of them and and rekindling the connection we've had i mean i've known both of them since i arrived in johannesburg which has been for 10 years now um Randall and i i knew because i worked with him on ysm back in the day but he's very good friends with my husband mm-hmm. and gareth and i met actually when we were both um interviewing westlife 10 years ago and we've both just gone along like a house on fire and he subsequently now works with my husband at five of him so it's just a nice rekindling that bond with them and and getting to them getting to know them a little bit better after that but it's it's been amazing it's been fun it's been hard it's been it's been you know they've been heartwarming moments but uh, also just annoying moments with people who really think they can sing I'm sure and at the end of the day they really can't so it's, you know, it's been a mixed bag of treats I was thinking about that this morning on the way to the station there are so many people with a dream they they have this dream yeah. they, they want to be a singer they believe they've got what it takes they stand in front of the judges and then um things get said and they get hurt and they get wounded is it difficult to not if you you've got somebody you can see the passion in their eyes and and they open their mouth and they cannot sing it uh-huh. really is because you you can see the dreams and and sometimes they even are fortunate to even tell us about the dreams mm. and I also I try to put myself in their shoes and that's why I I can never be horrible about letting them down I always try and put myself in their shoes to say how would I want to hear it and and how how can we make it a little bit gentler the the fall that is from grace but mm-hmm. it really is tough man you're dealing with people's dreams you're dealing with people's lives you're dealing with people's plans for the future because inevitably that's what dreams become right yeah. they people put plans in, in place to make their dreams come true so it really does get tough at times especially when they really really think they can sing and, and mm. this is what they want to make their life you know what I mean mm-hmm. Amen. but the talent this year has been good the it really has and what's beautiful I mean we're down to the, the top eight uh-huh. and there really is no 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 standout you know winner so to speak which means they're diverse as well I agree and that's that is that is that is wonderful because it means we're, we're in for treats for the next weeks to come as well uh-huh. one day I feel that um that Dave might win and then the, the next day I think no you know that's it could me. be it could it be Freddie yeah Freddie may win or what about Danae or and this morning yeah. I was thinking you know, you know, Mark is really good. So they all exactly. good. The whole exactly. lot of them are good. Tell me something. I, I, a bit on the. Um, I don't want to get controversial or anything. I'm not Gareth Cliff, but um, <laughs> well, the, the whole business with Freddie. I mean, it's been well publicised. So yeah. it's, it's no secret that he got into a bit of trouble over the weekend. Yeah. Um, do you think that's going to be good for him or, or bad? In, as oh, far as man. the voters, as I, far as the voters go. I really hope it could go either way, right? Mm-hmm. Because he could get the sympathy vote or he could get the he was a naughty boy vote. Yeah. But at the end of the day he 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 didn't get physical with the with the three cage fighters. And these are three cage fighters picking on a scrawny little singing guy. Shame, so man. I really hope it doesn't affect him and, and the strange thing is I didn't even know until I got to the shoot on Tuesday. Wow. And then I'm like, Freddie, and then what happened? Uh-huh. And then he told me what happened. 
happened. But what I love about what did happen is that he didn't fight back because um, he obviously doesn't believe in violence. But he did kind of chirp with his mouth. So, yeah. you know, I, I hope it doesn't affect him badly. And it could go either way. He could get people saying they don't like troublemakers, but he could also get the sympathy vote because he really does look beaten. Mm. His face looks terrible. Yeah, shame. And I know I noticed that the other night. Talk about sympathy vote. That's a, that's another question about idols. You, The three of you are, are employed by Mnet or, or yeah. whoever to, to judge the competition. And yeah. you judge it from the point of looking for talent. You try yeah. and sift out those people who don't really have talent. And then when it gets to the, the, the live shows and, and you're just there to give opinions, so to speak, some, and a whole new dynamic takes over with, with the, the voters voting. Yeah. And then um, is it so much about about talent at the end of the day? Or you know what, because I think for us, for us, for, for us, you can never know what millions and millions of people mm. um, base their vote on. But for us, it's, 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 it's all about being objective. So talent plays a huge part of it. But also, uh, you know, celebrity, just to yeah. create an English word there. To, mm-hmm. to, because you've got to make sure this person sells. This person's going to become a recording artist. This yeah. person's going to go around the country performing for people. So likability is a huge part of it. Uh, dedication is a huge part of it. Of it. Are mm. the, are the, is the person a hard worker? Personality. Um, personality is a huge part of it. And also character. Do you really appreciate the stage that they're on? You think about South African musicians who are professional already and you think this is a huge platform that any South African musician would love to have. And to have that opportunity to perform for millions and millions of people every every week, mm. something we've got to be cognizant of as well. So it's also are they taking it for granted? Do they understand the huge honor it is to be on the idol stage so I think there are many things that there are many things that come into play but most importantly it, it has to be about talent it has to be about stealing our hearts it has to be about being able to sing and, and be able to to make us the audience fall in love with him quite right um, who's going to win <laughs> oh my gosh you tell me <laughs> <laughs> well like I said today it's Mark today, yesterday it was Freddie today it's Mark <laughs> okay okay well I'll, I'll, I'll listen to that but it, it's true because this week it's Krishanda and the next week it's Dave and then I mean how about Lisa going from the bottom three to the top three yes, yes. and then you've got Dave who sings sexual healing and then it just it mm-hmm. literally changes every week so I'm being serious you tell me who's going to I'd love to know yeah it's going to be wonderful um, we spoke to Kelly yesterday Today about her, oh. her joy, her, her obvious joy on stage on Tuesday night. My word, what a turnaround that was! Eh? That that was exciting. You see what I mean? And Kelly, who goes from top three the last week to bottom to being voted off this week, so you never, ever, ever know. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. but she's a thankful little girl, so I'm I'm glad to take her. She's wonderful. She really yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. Listen, another another side to you, Nati, is your radio side, Metro. The love of my life. Ah, uh, is that your real passion? Radio? The love of, I, you know what? I love radio because, and you know this, mm-hmm. because what you say has, has, what you say is out in the open and it's gone. It's yeah. spontaneous. Radio is such an intimate form of, of, of communicating. One on one. really, it is, it's a one on one and also because of the theater of the mind, yep. people form different, different images of you. Um, and it's, it's raw because you say it and it's out there and you become the star to people's lives and, right. and it's a choice people choose to to to, to tune into you and, and that's why i love it and yeah. then you can talk about different things on a daily basis depending on what's happening in the world exactly my very favorite saying in the whole world is the pictures are always better on radio <gasps> that's stunning that's awesome absolutely that's awesome that's stunning the pictures it's are always true. better on radio that's beautiful how did you get into radio you, you won't believe it. It was my husband, actually, because I was in television 10 years ago, and I was doing a TV show on SABC One. And, um, my, well, he, he was a stranger at the time, and he saw me he saw me in on the show on SABC One, and he asked his boss to, to take a look at me and see if he if his boss thought that I'd be suitable for you. Know. And literally, his boss watched me. The following morning, he gave me a call. We had a meeting, um, and they offered 
to to just train me for YFM at the time and never to get a permanent job. Mm-hmm. But as it would have, have it, and it came my way, one of the ladies had to go on a three-day trip and they didn't have a stand-in and they asked me to stand in. Wow. I stood in for her for three days and they literally created a, a show for me. And you've been there on since? On a Sunday and I've been there since. Wow, man. And you'll I've live... Uh, you can't imagine giving up radio, hey? Never. You, never. It's in your never. blood. I really hope I'll be like a funky grandma at the age of 75. <laughs> I'm sure you will radio. be. Because that, that's the thing. Radio speaks to everyone at different times. Yeah. And, and you know, you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Or mm-hmm. you can just chill in a beautiful studio. So mm-hmm. I really pray, pray that I'll still be doing radio at the age of 75 or something. Maybe maybe not as big as now. Um, but maybe like a specialist show once a week or something like that. Gardening tips or something. Gardening tips or something <laughs> special. You know what I mean? How to knit for your grandkids. <laughs> well, Nazi, we, I'd love to chat all day, man. But just in closing, coming back to the Eastern Cape. Yeah. There are a lot of young people in the Eastern Cape with a dream. I've yeah. seen it. I've lectured at university level. I, I see it through radio as well. A, a lot of young kids, when you look at their eyes, you can see the dream. But the Eastern Cape as well, without knocking ourselves, is is really a very poor region. There's we a, are the, poor. We are impoverished. We really are. There's a lot that's not right here. I'm, I'm not really the political kind, but even that isn't right a lot of yeah. the time. And, and these young kids have these yeah. dreams and they, they think how am I ever going to attain it there you are sitting where you are today from the Eastern Cape what do you want to say to them the thing is our province is not going to become the richest until we do something about it mm-hmm. we 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 have the power in our own hands and not to sound preachy but it's 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 really as simple as that we have the power in our own hands um, for me I had to come to Joburg because I was I was in broadcasting and at the time we didn't have as many radio stations or, or, or television shows or newspapers as we do now the beautiful thing is we've got your true FM we've got your link FM we've got your and everything is starting up to make sure that the Eastern Cape becomes what it has to be. So dream dream even bigger than you're dreaming now and make it happen. I do a lot of work with uh, Mum Grasha Michelle, wife to Dad mm. Nelson Mandela, and she always says to the kids that we always speak to and that now is the time for small businesses. Now is the time to invest in your dream and make sure it happens. South Africa is so so rife with, with possibilities that now is the time for anyone to make their dreams come true because the capital is there, because the banks believe in us and the banks are making it easier and easier for us to invest in ourselves. So believe in your dreams. I, I can't make it resonate even more than, you know, I, I truly am living testimony to that. Mm-hmm. Believe in your dreams, invest in them, make it happen, but also put in the work that's due. I, I, I come from a family of very, very hard workers. My mom was a domestic worker and now she's got her master's in English and works in the office of the president. So wow. for me, I, I lived. I've lived in a hard-working household. Be hard workers. Put in the work that's due, and make sure you create living legacies for generations to come. And just, we are a talented bunch. I mean, working in Joburg, you see how hard people from the Eastern Cape are, and people who studied at Rhodes. And because I come from that school as well, your Nicole Fox is who was on side. Mm-hmm. Your Jeremy Mansfield is from this side. Your Hans Borte is from our side. Um, Totobe, Makayantini, yeah. Dr. Nelson Mandela himself, Tabo Mbeki. So there are a lot of people in different fields. In, in you know, we range from the arts to politics and everything in between who are very hard working. So, you know, find your mentor. Get the advice, but push and do not compromise on your dreams. I, I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. If you can dream it, it's a possibility, as cheesy as that may sound. There we go. In other words, don't give up. Don't give up. Okay. Never, ever, ever give up. Don't ever give up. Okay. And don't ever sell yourself short. Mm-hmm. Well, Nati, thank you so much. I could go on. You. Uh, you, sh- you, you should. You should write a book. You should write a book. Oh my gosh, I'm too young, but maybe in like 30 years or something, <laughs> I think about it. Now, there we go. You can do book reviews when you're 75 on radio. I like that. Good I like idea. That. I like that a lot. That's a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> well, Nati, all the best with the rest of the run and with radio. And don't forget, the pictures are always better on radio. The pictures are always better on radio. I love that. What a beautiful thing. <laughs> well, Nati, keep well. Bless you lots. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you so much to Nati from Johannesburg.